LT, it has been the talk of Alabama for four days. And you and I disagreed on it. Talking to, to different assistant coaches, of course, one being my little brother over at UVA, uh, across the country. I was right there with you at first, uh, that this was a fine line with the Auburn coaching staff, seven coaches in the limo touring the state, fine line between genius and crazy and genius and cheesy. And I think the Auburn Tigers erred on the side of genius. Well, I thought the complete idea was hokey, but I think they have accomplished their first goal by far, and that is exposure. Publicity, they've got it. Joining us right now live from the limo, running backs coach, recruiting coordinator for the Auburn Tigers, Curtis Looper here on the Roundtable on Jocks. How you doing, Coach? Hey, doing great, Lance. Thanks for having me on. It's our pleasure, sir. It is our pleasure. Uh, first of all, how is the aroma in the limo by about 5 o'clock in the afternoon? <laughs> hey, yeah, that's the time that the shoes come off and uh, the shirts are unbuttoned. And you wouldn't want to be in here then, I promise you. <laughs> oh, are there any lunch suggestions like Mexican that are totally out of the question? Uh, for the obvious reasons. For obvious reasons. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's a little too confined of an area here. Well, well Coach, you, you heard uh, some of the comments coming in as to it was that fine line. I think it was going to be perceived by a lot between genius and cheesy. And I, I think when you talk about 17 and 18 year old kids, it, it, you, it came on the line of genius. When you're a recruiting coordinator, do you have to not think as a middle aged man, but think like a 17 and 18 year old recruit and what they would think is cool? No doubt about it. And, and we think that way. You know, we all have children. I have five children, I have teenage children. So I know what they think. I know how they think. I know the music they listen to. I know uh, the things that they like. We know those things. But that wasn't our only target. Um, um, obviously, it, it really, if you have, you may get in a limo in recruiting. We'll, uh, we'll be able to see if this was effective or not. And if there's a way to measure it, who knows? Because a lot of the uh, uh, effects will, will not be tangible ones because we're developing relationships and now it's incumbent upon us to maintain those relationships. But uh, we haven't seen any negative from it whatsoever. And uh, we'll see in February how, how it all shakes out. I, I, when you first started on Monday, were you getting the, my gosh, this is ridiculously cheesy, to now on Thursday, now that you're here in Birmingham, and it's, have, have you sensed a different uh, you know, result, different attitude toward what you guys have done? I never, never thought it was cheesy. Um, that, that's something that we never really thought it would be, never, never thought it was. Actually, we, um, we didn't really know what the response would be, uh, but it's been overwhelming. We were at a, at a school today, and uh, there were hundreds of people outside, hundreds of people. So uh, Just when the limo pulled up. It's, uh, you know, we like to expose ourselves. Our doors are at Auburn are wide open. Our head coach, is, it starts there. We have a phenomenal staff. I could go down the list. I could, I could take your whole show to talk about each one of our coaches. We have a phenomenal staff. I, I guarantee you that a lot of uh, people-oriented coaches, and uh, Coach Chiswick would be defined as, as a player's coach. I know that because I played for him. I've been knowing him for 20 years, and he's called me back every time for the last 15. He's been instrumental in me getting every job that I've gotten, and, and uh, uh, sometimes I can't believe I'm actually coaching with him. That's the type of relationship that we have. But it's obvious the type of staff that we have. When we took over, when Coach Chiswick took over in January and we got there, we moved into the top 20 in, in recruiting in, in weeks. So we, we, um, and we have months now. And uh, the expectation that we set upon ourselves are really high. Really and the, high. And the only but reason this I'm, is just the beginning. This is not the end for us. This is just the beginning. Well, it, it's I, like I said earlier. I mean, it, it, there's a fine line between genius and crazy, and I think you guys ended up on the side of genius. And the only reason I mentioned that cheese factor is because we're middle aged guys. To us, we're like, wait a minute, they're going in a limo. But it meant going back to the start of the conversation, to an 18 year old, that's that's as cool as it gets. You know, that that's the reception I'm I'm wondering from Monday to today. That wow factor you just I think answered the question. Hundreds of people were out there waiting on you. Are you even surprised at how big it's gotten? Oh no, no question, no question. We, we'd never in our wildest dreams uh, dreamt it would be this way. But uh, you know, there is something there's something about a limo that, that's appealing to 16 and 17 year olds. You know, and uh, the prom and, and whatnot. But it's just our mode of transportation. We have to do, we have to transport seven huge men, and uh, the <laughs> limo is a um, is just the first class way. We're first class organization, so that's that's the way we're going to transport ourselves. But uh, let's not miss the point. The limo is not the story. It's not. It shouldn't be the focus. Although I know it will be in some instances, but it's the fact that seven coaches 
have, uh, have saturated the state of Alabama for it. Auburn running backs coach and recruiting coordinator Curtis Looper, our guest on the roundtable. So who's working the music? Who's playing DJ in there, Coach? Well, Taylor, Trooper Taylor's a DJ now. He's a, he's a DJ, and he's a little 270-ish for me. You know, I'm a little more contemporary guy. He's a little 270-ish for me. So what hits out of the 70s is he playing right now? Uh, he's Marvin Gaye. It's Marvin Gaye and Al Green. Well, you know, I, I personally, I, I would like the little, little Wayne, T.I., so, you you are in the heads of the recruits right now. <laughs> oh. Now, let me guess, Ted Rufo may be looking for some Kenny Rogers? You know, Ted surprises. He surprises. He's down with the 70s. Uh, I guess we could call it classic or He's down with the 70s. Ted surprises. And even Gus. Gus was humming some tunes as well. Come so, on. Uh, we were pleasantly surprised. And it was a live performance. The CD was live performance. And Gus said, well, that's not the original, is it? Okay, well, who can sing? He's, he's uh He's cool. He's well cool. It's been a, it's been an amazing time. We've also gotten the chance to, to jail as a staff and get to know each other. As you can imagine, we've only been together for you know four months, so we, we've had some really good times. Really good times. And the comedian of the crew, which was generally he's generally kind of low profile and standing in the back, he's Tracy Walker. What? Question, it's Tracy Walker. So when when we get a chance to uh, in a different venue. And on a different stage, we're going to give Tracy Rocker the mic and let him go because he's pretty good. We generally give it to Coach Taylor and let Trooper do it, but it's Tracy Rocker. No question. All right, funniest thing you have, that you went, did Tracy Rocker just say that in the four days you've been in this limo? Well, see, Tracy, at the end of the day, you know, you get, he gets a little giddy. He really gets giddy. And uh, he starts taking the Tiger prowl and he starts saying, you know, what are we going to do next year? He comes up with, you know, having a Tiger, you know, travel behind us and helicopters, and he comes up with some with some wild stuff. And, and it's really, it may not sound funny today, but it is funny because of his delivery, who he is, because he doesn't generally say very much at all. But about five, he's had enough. That's enough for him after about uh, after about eleven hours. Whose dogs are barking the worst at five o'clock when the shoes come off? It's no question. No question, it's Rocker. And he's got some money <laughs> on there uh, that, that maybe we could get Dr. Andrews to, to help him with. <laughs> oh. <laughs> boy, at the end of the day, you don't want to leave with you, uh, Tracy. So, Coach, what's been louder? You traveling on a road trip with your five children or actually in that limo with six other grown men? No, it's the children. It's not even close. Until the advent of the DVD. The DVD has silenced all of my children. But... um. Uh, and here, and we also we watched the movie. You know, we we're trying to educate these guys and get them a little bit more well rounded. And we didn't bring any movies ourselves. Just the, the limo guy. He had uh, he had Friday in here, the original Friday with Ice Cube and Chris Rock. <laughs> yeah. Big worm. So, can you imagine Malzahn and Ted Roo and Philip Lally? Friday. Now, how come you got to <laughs> rattle off the white guys? You got two geeky, pasty white guys right here. Believe me, I love me some big worm, man. Are you kidding me? Uh, big worm, baby, big worm. <laughs> hey, coach, we've had, a, we've had a blast, and uh, you know it's the first annual Tiger Proud. I can tell you because uh, uh, without question, we'll be back. We'll be back next year. Well, Coach, I tell you what, once again, uh, genius. The entire country is talking about it, and I think you'll see other coaches around the country steal it. And then when you have that happen, that's the ultimate form of flattery, and you know it worked. Okay, congratulations on a great idea. Absolutely, man. I turned down Kornheiser and Wilbur on the day. I said, no, no PTI. I'm all with my guys in Birmingham today. We, that's we, what we like, Coach. Hey, Coach, well, you know you have an open door here to the round table. We always appreciate it. We always enjoy catching up with you. Okay, man. Thanks, man. See you, Coach. Bye. Curtis Looper. Live from the limo, right here on the roundtable. 